Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly, and just like that, we're back with part two. Yes, part two, Tom Pinto. And before we go there, a lot of you were asking about my bracelets. They are handmade gemstones, incredible uh, energy and properties, and you can get them at Earthly Love and Light on Etsy. Gina I got Herring, some too, rocks. baby. Gina yes. rocks. All right, Tom let's get Pinto. buzzed. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. So, when you think about the times when you had maybe some setbacks mm -hmm. in your career, maybe some challenges, how did you push through them? What did you do? Did it did it make you say, that's it, I'm done, or what did you Never, think? never that, never I'm, I'm, not, that? I'm not wired that way. However, though, you can get in funks, and you can begin to say, well, what am I doing? And you can begin to press, and I think mm. that that's what happens. And it's easy for me as a coach to tell people, don't press, if you yourself have pressed before, but I'd say, please try to learn from my mistakes. But I also feel that uh, it's, it's important to say, is there something going on that I'm not paying attention to, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? And I don't want to get metaphysical here, but I think at that point, you got to stop and reflect, why is this happening? What is the lesson that I'm supposed to be learning? Yeah. Where am I supposed to be going with it? Yeah. What should I accept? Or what should I try to do to improve myself, to yeah. empower myself on it, as opposed to just banging my hands against the wall and you know, telling my agents, how come I'm not doing this? How come so-and-so got that series and I didn't get a chance to even read for it? You know, mm -hmm. It's wasted, wasted, wasted energy. Um, and I also feel that if I did the same thing over and over and over again throughout my entire career, you know, like Hal Douglas you know, said he was a very rich man, but he said, you know, you know after a while, I said the same thing, Buffy, the Vampire Slayer. You know, he said he felt like one promo led into another. Well, mm -hmm. some people say, well, yeah, well, why don't you give me that kind of monotony? But right. I feel very fortunate that I've had a chance to do a lot of different things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And continue, now that I'm older, and I'm saying that, now that I'm older, I get a chance to do, you know, sometimes older characters that, when I was too young, I don't don't get a chance to do that anymore. Right. To do a narrator on a on a video game, not a not necessarily one of those guys who's screaming and yelling, but yeah. you right. know the wise voice or something like that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's and fun. you do have a beautiful mm -hmm. texture in your voice, man. When you go down like that, mm -hmm. thank you. It is like really just like all of a sudden like this velvet thing comes out. Yes. And the, mm -hmm. These oh. little like angels start popping out on top yeah. of your head, and <laughs> there's like a river of butter. A river oh, of butter. See, look at you doing the colors already. Hey, buddy. I hear French you do. Butter. I hear you do a good mm. Columbo. Can you, can, you, can you do a little Columbo for us? <laughs> you know, the problem is, is that all these people are dying on me, Chuck, and then I can't do them anymore. Next thing you know, Sylvester Stallone's gonna die, and then Tom Pinto's gonna be shit out of luck. <laughs> But excuse me, am I bothering you? I love that. You see, the thing is, Chuck, is that you don't have to do Columbo. And this was the advice. I love how you do the eye. See, they can't see the eye, but you do the eye. The eye, like, goes. You have to do the eye, you see, because if you don't, then you don't get the constriction. But it was the advice of the great Dawes Butler from Hanna-Barbera. I took a few classes with him. Unfortunately, he had a stroke, and so I didn't get a chance to study with him more. But he said, you need to go into a deli and order some food. You know, yeah. and 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 the people and and work on your character that way. I'm sorry, he every character he did kind of sounded like yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah. those things. But yeah. he's a sweet man, yeah. and it was great advice. So I'd go into Cantor's. Oh yeah, on Fairfax. Twenty four yeah, hours. Yeah, okay. exactly. Still just, there, Tom. Whoever, there. exactly. Whoever, whoever was the waitress. Unfortunately, I'd be working on uh, working on Columbo or, or some, somebody else. But uh, pastrami on rye. Pastrami on mm. rye. Yeah, can he be lean? You know, last time was just a little fatty, so just if you could just cut that off, you know, I hope I'm not bothering you. You keep, you keep, going, keep going And back they're like, to, this so guy good. is a little whack. So good. Yeah. Um, probably made them laugh. Um, <laughs> that's very, very good. So for the people out there that maybe, maybe aren't at a pro level yet, mm -hmm. okay, they're working and stuff like that. What are a few tips that you can give them of things that they could be that are uh, constructive things that they could be do to actually um, get them on the right road to have a successful voiceover business? 
I'm, it's funny because, again, it's kind of hearkening back to this Atlanta conference as it was brought up by a couple of other people, is that there's a lot of emphasis on get your studio together, get it, your perfect microphone, mm. get the soundproofing, yep. this and that. Okay, I've got my monitor here and my monitor there. Great stuff, but... I think you need to continue to work with a coach. Everybody needs a coach. For example, a, a guy that I've worked with on an average of three to four times a year, but unfortunately he has left the coaching and now he's uh, directing some video games out here, David Lyerly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, was wonderful for me because here I am, I'm at a place, well, somebody that I want to trust, but at the same time, somebody's going to challenge me. And he was great because he challenged. Cause he, and yeah. he's also got a, yeah. a different style. He looks at it from a different way, and he knows yeah. that I'm a teacher. But it's always good to be flexing your muscles in a, in, in a different arena. Yeah. And unfortunately, some people think, I don't need it anymore. I have my demo. I do this. I'm working. Right. I think we need to continue to grow. And that's not meaning like you need to get into another 10 week workshop with somebody, but I think you need to do the occasional private with, and not the same guy. Yeah, I a agree with that. A different person. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we are all directed by different people. So if you get used to the warm and cuddly feel of director A, you're not gonna be good when you get the... Douchebag the, B. Yeah, the, uh, could you do that again, please? Just. Three in a row, please. And, yeah, you know, the more direct approach of like, no, this is what I yeah. want. You have yeah. to be yeah. able to. You have to be able to, uh, you know, be receptive to the different styles of direction. Yeah, and I and also different theories, different ways mm -hmm. to approach. Of the, course. To, mm -hmm. So, the other thing is that they need to uh, remember that they've got to do something for their career every day. Mm. Yeah. You know, every day, small every day. thing, a phone call, an email, to someone go out in your studio and write something on the blackboard, an inspirational thing for yourself. Uh, decide, okay, I'm going to take that piece of copy that I did yesterday and I really wasn't happy with the audition. What can I do here to risk, you know, on, on a reboot? Yeah. Um, I don't think people give themselves enough sandbox time, as I like to call it, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, because they want to just get to the auditions and do it. But we, we got to have some creativity. Yeah, you know, in, in what we do, and I, I, I mean, it to in some experimentation. Yeah. So I would tell them do that, do something, do something for your business, and also I'm, I'm saying, you know, don't discount the fact that everybody's growing. You know, David Lyerly. I mean, I've admitted on camera mm -hmm. that David Lyerly was coach of mine. David has a lot of clients who don't want people to know that they're being coached by somebody yeah. at this stage in their career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they either hit a wall or they're trying to do something different and learn yeah. something and they, they want somebody that they feel safe with. Yeah. And so yeah. David yeah. was a great choice yeah, for me. Yeah. Well, yeah. I agree with that, man. And I tell people, I encourage people all the time to do that because you're working with one person and basically it's almost like like playing the same song over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, you just think that every song that you're ever gonna hear is just that song. And and then but and then I've heard people say, oh yeah, but the thing is is that, you know, I was working with this one coach and they told me that, and then I was working with another coach and then they told me that, and then this other coach contradicted both of them, and so I don't know who to believe. And I said, they're all right. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is you, you take what works what with works. you with for this you. person, yeah. what works for you for him with him, and what works with her, and you incorporate that exactly. into your... There's morsels. I have yeah. a few students who will come up to me and they'll say, you know what, I took this workshop with Marilyn Wisner, and she told me X, Y, and Z, and it made all the difference. And you know mm -hmm. what my response is? I love it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, don't, I don't need to be at the top of your hit parade. I don't care where you get it, I just want you to get it. And yeah. so there's a lot of different people out there who've got different ways of pushing your buttons. And so that's the other thing, mm -hmm. getting back to the pushing your buttons, maybe somebody who can get to you yeah. that who because you were so used to the other person that yeah. you became complacent. Exactly. Well, yeah, when you get yeah. stuck in your comfort zone, that's pretty totally. deadly. Yeah. yeah. So, Tom, one of the greatest things that I love about you, man, is first of all, you're you're like a say it like it is yes, guy. Yes, straight shooter. Mm. You're not there mm. to paint a pretty picture. It's like if you want to know, if, if you ask Tom a question, you're going to get a real answer. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And I also love that you have 
your ears are so trained and so good that you could hear something. And I know this because I've in the past have done d demos with somebody and you'll hear a read on maybe a demo where you're just like, man, if you could just tweak this like that or like that, and then it'll be, and then I hear it back and I'm like, damn, that Tom, mm. oh. your ears are so <laughs> sharp, man. So let me ask you about this. Yeah. In your opinion, what are some maybe do's and don'ts or people that should, that maybe people should look out for or maybe stay away from when it comes to a demo? The one size fits all type of thing. Okay. I, th I think everybody has their own style. And so in this day and age where demos are so much shorter yeah. than, you know, back in the Paleozoic era when I started out, you know, demos could have been two two minutes and 40 seconds long and agents mm. were terrific, yeah. okay? Yeah. But now, like that. Yeah. So you've gotta be careful that you represent their brand. And so I, I'm telling people, when you work with a demo producer, you need to let them know who you are. You may want to be a particular person, but maybe right. you're not there yet. And you right. need to be able to listen to them to say, you know what, I work with a lot of people, I'm not quite sure that's competitive. Right and I'd be doing you a, a dis, disservice. So I think, and I also like, um, I also talk about the triangle factor, meaning, okay, you're the producer, so that's one part of the triangle. You're the talent, let's say, that's the other ti triangle, part of the triangle. And the third one might be agent, confidant, not necessarily husband and wife, yeah. but somebody else in the industry who you really trust, right. mm -hmm. who will tell you the truth. I think that triangle is good. Mm -hmm. You know, it can sometimes it can get in the way if somebody has an agenda. But I think uh, if if you're careful and you select somebody you trust, that they'll tell you. You know, I didn't think the second read was that much different from the fourth. I have somebody like that whenever he's putting together my my editing together my demos. Yeah, you know, he'll tell me. I say no, Tom. I, I don't I don't see the difference between five and six or five and seven. I don't think you need both. Well, thank you. Yeah. Because I myself was more invested hearing, like you said, yes. hearing all those yep. small yes. things. Yep. And that's the other thing. I mean, you, I mean you've, you've got a, a, a great ear, sir, yourself. <laughs> so don't, you know. And it's easy True. sometimes. It's easy for somebody who's not been doing all the mixes yeah. to kind of like hit the play button and go, like it, like it, mm, like it. And, you know, that doesn't mean I'm right about number three being mm. But there's something to at least to address. Yeah. Why is it? Mm. Right. Yeah. Didn't we got you. sometimes we need to trust the visceral. Yeah. On this, as opposed to, well, let me listen again. If yeah. if I find myself saying, let me listen again. Yeah. Maybe I'm trying to yeah. convince my yeah. myself yeah. of something on that. So I, I I try to avoid that. But I don't. I'm not really producing you know many demos anymore. Once in a blue moon, if somebody like says, "Would you do this?" Because it's God. What the. the the energy that you guys put into this, the directing, the, the customizing of the copy, Stacy, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which is which is great as well. The production values and like a couple of the narration demos that you did. I mean, it's like yeah, you're you're lifting the bites and everything like that. So, you know, sounding yeah, sounding like real stuff. really good. Yeah, and sounds, and then yeah. we say, and then as my agent Lisa, uh, the documentary agent in New York, Lisa Marbridge says, she goes. But Tom, can he live up to it? And I go, okay. Yep. Yes. I got, at least it doesn't really sound like that. But, yes. <laughs> but you know, that's that's what she wants to yeah, know yeah. because right. on the long format, they want to make sure that exactly. can I trust that twenty second clip yeah. before uh, I hire them? Mm -hmm. um, can I ask you a question? And I know it's kind of hard because I'm not saying what's the best demo that you ever done, but what was one of the most unique demos you ever did? <sighs> Man. Is that a hard um, one? Is that, is that to, to it, pull out of the air? You know what? It really is. And But, I mean, it's like saying, you know, what's the best job you've ever done, ah, right? Because, yeah. I mean... Is it the meditation well, demo? But no, but, but the thing is, is that, you know, I'm not a coach. Mm -hmm. Could I coach? Probably. You, you give enough direction. I mean, I've been direction. in the industry yeah. for, for, right? Um, so... I, I specialize in demos and mm -hmm. all de all kinds of demos. I have my buddies that are in animation and mm -hmm. promos and in show narration and video games and mm -hmm. you name it. And it's like I love all the industry. I love every time that I work on a demo, whether it would be with you or with Stacy or with Paz or Steve over there. You know, it's like I want whatever they wanted to accomplish. That's more important to me 
to talk about yeah. what who they are, what they are, what they want to accomplish, how they want people to perceive them in today's mm. market. Yeah. Way more important. I sense that individualist on your demo. I just didn't know if there was one that stood out in terms of like a challenge. So I'll I'm going to share with with you. Okay. And and now we got to really do the harp music, or we're going to okay. go back a long time ago. The two that stood out is really they were tough but great challenges. And the first one, Cam Clark said, "I want you to help me with my animation demo." Yep. Mm -hmm. He had two or three cartoons that he had done. He had a couple of Disney radio things, and then we needed to add, record some new tracks. And he says, "But I don't want it to be like." any other one, you know, whatever. And I also want a little bit of my singing on it. And so he brought in this song that he did called The Land of Make Believe. And so he goes, what do you think we can use? Do you, do you, and I started to think, and I used it as a thread. Mm. And I took a verse and then he went into character. Then I took another verse and based on what the words, what, yeah. the, what the emotion was, yeah. then it did, and I, and I even said, okay, based on this verse, we need a pirate. You know, so whatever. And so it was a really great creative mm -hmm. a challenge putting together, threading all the characters, kind of pocket talking in between yeah. the song. So that was that was fun. The other one was the late Lorenzo Music. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, for people who don't remember Lorenzo Music, he was basically, he was a writer producer on the Rota show, he, but he was the voice of... Hello, I'm Carlton the Doorman. Remember? Mm -hmm. He was yeah. also Garfield, okay? But... He may have sounded like that, but he was a bright, 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 yeah, bright yeah. man. And so when he started getting more into voiceover, he signed with SBV, and he says, well, I need a tape now. I need you to edit these. And so we had reams and reams and reams of tape. And so what are we going to do? And he says, I always say hello. I said, what? I start every commercial saying hi or hello. So we went through all of them, and sure enough, he had, <laughs> hi, I'm a chicken. Hello, how are you? Whatever. So a different, go, hey there, Susie. So we did a 70-second montage of hi, Highs hellos, hellos, blah, 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 and then closed it with a Dick Orkin spot, because that was one of his favorite guys to work for, where he goes, hi, Bob. And Dick Orkin was going, oh, God. <laughs> he goes, and then goodbye, and then shut the door. So That's it was really cool. his brainchild, but I had, and this was in the day of cutting quarter oh, Gosh, oh, no. Boy. But I had but I had so much fun because I couldn't wait to piece this thing yeah, together yeah. and and uh, so that was that's an easy slam dunk for me that was the, yeah. maybe the most fun that yeah, I ever yeah. had between those 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 two projects there but uh, it's a lot well, of I mean, work. Every, I mean every I feel like for you every client it's it's everyone's one of a kind. There's mm -hmm. like yeah. every experience like your direction you don't have pat direction. Yeah. I mean, Everyone uh, is really a unique Yeah, I can tell entity, you a, a cool story cool. that you guys might enjoy checking out. So I worked with this guy, and I'm not going to say any names. He's probably out there. Uh, he knows who he is. And, you know, he had a very, very particular sound. Mm -hmm. Not a common one. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we did this demo, and, you know, it was what it was. And I thought to myself, which I should never do, and I'll never do this again, mm -hmm. but I thought to myself, wow, man. That's a very, very small box for somebody to be in, you know, because he just like doesn't sound mainstream at all. And mm -hmm. it's going to be tough, you mm -hmm. know, because he wants an agent. He wants to work and blah, blah. Yeah. And so cut his demo. He gets out there and I don't have high hopes. Mm -hmm. I just didn't. And man, talk about a slap in the face. Where are right? you wrong? A week later. He gets agent representation, and three days after that, he books a major national campaign. You know why? Because nobody sounds like him. Out of the box. Out of the box. That's and I wonderful. was just like, oh my God. Lesson learned. So, yeah. lesson learned that, you know, if you sound like everybody, <laughs> it is, it's harder than if you don't, <laughs> than if you just sound, be true to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, that's your gift. That, that's your that, gift. That's your gift to be able to, and, and you got to be able to hang hang your hat on that. Absolutely. And if you're if the person's confident about it, yeah. Why get in the way? You may say, you know what, this may be a tough sell with some agents, but if you find somebody, I mean, everybody's looking for cluster busters. Yep. They're looking for voices or styles that are 
going to grab our attention. And we've heard them over the years, yeah. the ones, the, the prototypes over the years who have, right. you know, broken the mold and all that. You never know. He yeah. may be that guy that uh, broke breaks the mold. Well, he, he yeah. did booked it. And yeah. by the way, you're not the only one I put together, not put together. I was coaching somebody uh, when he first started out. And I wasn't exactly sure that he was getting what I had to offer, and I also felt like uh, he was a little stiff and it, it, you know, not quite there, and he, I was making him nervous, and I felt terrible, and, and, and I wasn't really sure about it, and then, you know, and then uh, sent him on his merry way, and then he worked with another coach, and then he signed with an agent, and he started making money, and now he's also a fabulous teacher, and his name is Dave Walsh. Wow. So Touch. no one was happier when suddenly, like, when Debbie Cope says, oh, I signed Dave Walsh on my team, and I'm going. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. good. Very so, good. you know. So and great. He, and he's, he's smart, and he was persistent on top of it. So, yeah. and, yeah. and uh, I believe, I'm not sure, I think it was Maurice Tobias knew how to what? How to push his buttons yeah. to yeah. get what we needed to yeah. do. So, Mr. Pinto. Yes. You obviously work all the time. But Try. how do you <laughs> it's work a break. How do you stay at the top of your game and stay on top of the trends and stay relevant? Well Because you're obviously evolving. Staying on top of the trends is exactly part of it for me. Mm. Because I feel as though, and it's funny, I mentioned David Lyerly earlier, he would say, don't worry about trends, you know, be yourself and bold, and I get it, and I understand that, but, you know, I've always been a second waiver, I've never been a first waiver type of thing, mm -hmm. and also being, having worked in advertising, it was always from the standpoint of, we need somebody who's going to fit what we're doing, so I try to look at the trends because I feel as though it's important to know what's hot. It's not like you're going to do an imitation of that particular person who's doing all that work. Like I tell women, please stop trying to do impersonations of Alice and Janney. Guys, right. stop trying to do Mike Rowe. You right. know, that just means rugged and the other one means warm and witty. Okay? Yeah. Go, go from there. So I stay on top of my game by trying, trying my best to keep learning. I challenge myself to say... Can this be better? So I save auditions where mm -hmm. I book the jobs. So they're on my desktop. And I'll refer to them from time to time. And then when it gets to the point to where I, listen, where I hear that audition and I'll say, you know what, I think I can do better than that. Then I'll challenge myself and I'll go back and I'll reread that. And that's a job that I booked. Mm -hmm. But it, that's about me raising my game. That's good. You know, I, I, just, I just try to do that. The other thing is that I, I, I also accept, okay, your voice is getting older, your voice is getting, like he's a resonant. It wasn't always this resonant, Chuck. Uh, right. I kind of went through my Frank Sinatra phase. Yeah. You know? <laughs> no, no, but it, 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 it was funny because my voice suddenly got deeper. Suddenly people are saying, you're too old for that. Really? You're like, I'm only 24. What? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so like when somebody says, I'll take a look at an audition, and getting back to my thing where I said about being selective, I'll say, you know what? This is a creative, this is a creative project. I'm going to go for this audition. If I suck, I'm not going to submit it. But I'm not going to deny myself the opportunity to give it a go. And, and go for the quirky thing. Right, right. So a couple of years ago, there was something kind of like they said they wanted a William Hurt type. And mm -hmm. I'm going, William Hurt? God, I, well, you know, I mean, I love William Hurt, but it kind of like, well, whatever. So, so I watched Accidental Tourist and kind of thought about what he was going to do. And suddenly I was doing this national campaign for a bleach, you know? Mm. I would have never thought of that. I would have never pushed myself, but I was in that mood that day to mm. say, today is sandbox time. If I suck, I suck. Beautiful. I love that, man. So yeah. I, I just try. I just, you know what, and, and the other thing is that I have, to, I, I have to also accept, you know, this ship has sailed. I say that constantly in class. Mm -hmm. You know what, boys mm -hmm. and girls, I was the voice of Disneyland for about five to seven years, but that ship has sailed. Right. You know, so yeah. moving on, yeah. finding the other things. So the national campaigns I'm on right now, I would have never thought that I would be on. You know, I've got a, Clor a new Clorox campaign that's kind of like an Alec Baldwin kind of thing. I have a spam campaign 
that is like Doug Jeffers is the Miller High Life guy. Now, if you would talk to me 20 years ago and said, are you going to do that? I go, no, that's not going to be me. Mm -hmm. But part of that is taking what the universe has to offer you yep. and then work in that area to be the best in that niche. Yeah. Yep. I mean, the volume of copy isn't what some of the other 30-somethings are getting, but uh, I think there's plenty of room sure. for a mature voice. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, especially Tom's. What's the next phase? Like, what would what else do you want to do with your life? Like, it, it, the next thing that that Tom wants to accomplish in his life that maybe you haven't yet accomplished. I mean, it's, it's it's not a voiceover goal. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's good. Uh, last year, I finished uh, the first screenplay that I have written in twenty years. I finally got back into the writing zone. Beautiful. Congrats. Wow. Um, and then I'm I'm working on a second one, and I did a table read late last year with some of my favorite Bay Area actors up there. So I had like 12 people and oh, it was God. really wonderful. And it was basically a journey through my radio days in the 70s. Mm. And so there's a lot of music oh, in there man, and cool. uh, various DJs and the different personalities, those yeah. on the way up, those on the way down. So trying to get this into the right channels of the right people, if you know what I'm talking yeah. about mm -hmm. on that. And uh, so I would like to, before you know, before I take my dirt Consider nap. Consider this the chalkboard. <laughs> yeah. Dirt nap. All right. This I is the would chalkboard. Like, yeah. I, yes. I'm going to put it, you know, I would like to have something made. Or you know what? I would even love if somebody just optioned something that I wrote. Yeah. And then, and then go from there. But writing has really been wonderfully creative. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, by the way, I also think, I think writing's made me a better actor again. Absolutely. Because you're sitting there thinking about the beats, you're yeah. thinking about the character, yeah, the complexity of that. Yeah. So. Colors. I feel, Colors, yeah. I feel, I see us sitting at the premiere of your project. Oh, God. I He's like, oh, God. Thank you. I've <laughs> never been wrong. Ever. Okay. Yeah, but now, is but never now, wrong. I've learned that. <laughs> let's, let's channel mm. May Whitman. Okay. Please develop this project. <laughs> yes, okay. May. There's a character that's perfect for you. And it's on beautiful. Facebook, May. Yes, on May. On Facebook. Um, Private here's your message. mystery question, Tom. <laughs> Pick a card, any card. So, and am I going to read the question? Or you yeah, read maybe it you can read it in like your favorite your character, character voice. Okay, there you go. Okay. Let's see. I don't know why this one is jumping out at okay. me. It's a simple one. Mm. Okay. But I'm trying to think of one. Your favorite to, character voice. My favorite character yeah. voice. So I know Colum Columbo is the favorite, but you already hear that. But uh, uh, I'm going to channel <laughs> my favorite character Rita to do when Hal I was Douglas. young. What, was that who? Read it as Hal Douglas. No, no. Hal Douglas. No, what is your favorite character? On an all new Buffy the Vampire Slayer, what makes a house a home? That was good. What um, makes a house Wait, I want to know what your favorite character was when you were little, Joe. Ed Wynn. Oh, oh cool, I loved man. Ed Wynn. Yeah. I loved oh, what a great... <laughs> bubble, the bubble, the bubble. But everybody does Ed Wynn. <laughs> I remember he had the Howie, Howie Morris saying to me at a cartoon, he goes, oh, shut up. <laughs> everybody does Ed Wynn. I was on Sid Caesar's <laughs> show of shows. Everybody in that cast did Ed Wynn. Jeez, how do you really feel? Oh Yo, Howie, Howie was terrific because he ripped everybody. Yes, it was yes, very, yes. very funny. So, uh, anyway, uh, what makes a house a home? What makes my house a home? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mrs. P. Aww. Mrs. P. Yeah. Mrs. P. Yeah. Mrs. P because I'm, uh, uh, we've been together since 2002. But... We were together in 1970 and 1971. Oh. Wow. And then when I graduated from high school, went separate ways. I was going into radio and then and fast. And you lived your way back to each other. Yeah. That's beautiful. Via classmates.com. An old love rekindled. Yeah. And it was. Right here. But isn't it great because you have this history that you you could never have with anyone else. I know. You know, so yeah. it's like I, I think there's something really great about well, that. Yeah, man. she's Thank yeah, you for yeah, no, she's great, and she puts up with me. Uh, the, That's the, a hard task. No, it, it, it <laughs> is. It's just that having a home studio, and I think other people can right. relate to this from time to yes. time. Yes. You know, you're ready. You got your coffee. You're all good. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. I'm in character. I'm ready to walk in, and then my wife will say. 
Can you fill the the Tide container for? <laughs> no, I'm in acting mode, please. I'm in the zone, babe. I'm I in the zone. I talk about Tide. <laughs> Type of thing, but no, she's great. Tom, the, the trash is overflowing. <laughs> yes, Tom, it can wait. This it was ex- such a joy and a pleasure to oh, have you, you guys. here. Absolutely, thank you man. so much. Thank you. you are, are you so kidding? welcome here anytime. What a special treat, we man. We adore you. Thank, you. thank you so much. Nice. So much success and abundance to you. Well, you know what? I just hope. I hope that because you, you guys have a very a global audience. I just hope they understand that. Uh, I think perseverance. I mean, it's not just talent. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, perseverance and belief in yourself and you got to enjoy what you do absolutely always so, absolutely always thank every you single so day. much thank you. thank you buddy thank you and thank you guys bye everybody very good hi this is tom pinto and i've just been buzzed by chuck and stacy i loved it and i want to leave you with just a little tidbit for all you people out there whenever you're reading a piece of copy think visually then act vocally that's all i got well, that concludes our two-part episode with the awesome. So awesome. Can we just say awesome together? Awesome. awesome. Tom, Tom Pinto. Pinto. My goodness gracious, yes. man. What a wealth what of information. I, I, I swear I could talk to that guy for like mm-hmm. weeks and hours yeah. and months and yeah. years. Uh, we hope you guys have enjoyed uh, uh, meeting Tom and getting to know him a little bit. We know we had a great time with him as well. We're going to see you next time with a new episode, so stick around. Yes, we will. And keep up with us on Facebook, and Twitter, and Instagram. We love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for, for a little, little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo Fit Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosFitRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time.